Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and in this video, we'll be looking at the Razer RF100, also known as the GB100. This one came from Gearbest, where it retails for about $100, that's about £70, and links to the product are in the video description. This is a mini FPV racing quadcopter, perfect for indoor and even outdoor flight on a still day. It has everything you need except for the transmitter, and if you do wish to fly FPV, the headset we reviewed last week would be a perfect match, especially for those looking to get into FPV. Please remember to subscribe and enjoy the review. So this is the Okday Razer RF100. It's also known as the GB100 and it's from Gearbest. This is a micro scale 100 class FPV quadcopter and it is seriously cute. So in the box, we've got the quadcopter and then we've got some accessories here. We've got a one cell battery, which is a 600 milliamps. We've got four spare props. We've got a charging USB cable. So you actually charge these one cell LiPos with a laptop um, or et cetera, another USB power source. Uh, we've also got a micro screwdriver in there. So nice little accessory bundle. And now looking at the quadcopter itself. So it is tiny, this thing. It's 100 class. It only weighs 50 grams. It weighs nothing at all. It's perfect to fly around the house, bounce off walls, hopefully not to bounce off people, because unlike the tiny whoop, the props on this are not shrouded. So if you do hit someone in the face with this, it's going to hurt. It has a Naze 32 flight controller built in, and because of that, we've got a USB port on the rear. So you can connect this up to clean flight and program it, change your PID, set rates, exponential, etc. So that's really good. And the Naze 32 is a great flight controller board. It's also got an inbuilt DSMX DSM2 receiver. So this is a ready to fly. It's literally, you bind it with a transmitter that's suitable and you can fly immediately. It has a 600 TVL camera built into it and attached to that is also a 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter unit. It's only a 25 milliwatt, but that's more than adequate for an, a micro quadcopter like this, which is designed to be flown indoors. One customization I'd be tempted to make here would be to protect this little antenna. This is the video transmitter antenna. It's only a simple little solder weld there. So just in case you land upside down, uh, to avoid putting any stress on that joint, I'd be tempted to hot glue gun a little um, stick or something on here facing upright, just so that if you roll over, it's gonna act as a roll cage and protect that delicate antenna. The motors on here are brushed. They are tiny little 0720s. Uh, don't expect them to live forever. They're not brushless, but they're incredibly cheap and easily replaceable. Looking at the construction of it, it's a single mold plastic upper shell here, nice and solid actually. Uh, that's gonna protect all of the internal components. If you really wanted to save weight, you could probably remove this, but I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you're a beginner. The actual frame itself of the quadcopter is carbon fiber, which is really impressive to see. Um, lovely bit of molding there and um, nice and lightweight. It doesn't look like there's any excess materials on there that don't need to be there. So that's really good as well. So all in all, a really nicely constructed little unit. It's got a nice molded solid bit of plastic, a bit of carbon fiber, and it weighs virtually nothing. So let's give it a fly and see how it goes. So what we're now gonna do is bind our RF100 with our transmitter. I've got a Tyrannis here, which doesn't support DSM2 or DSM-X. However, I've added a module to the rear of it, as you can with most transmitters, and the Orange RX module here does support those two protocols and others as well. So it lets us use the same transmitter, but with different aircraft. It has its own dedicated 2.4 gig antenna. So what we need to do now is tell the transmitter to use that external module instead of the internal one. So we're gonna turn on our transmitter. Hi Ash, I'm ready to go. And you can see I've created a dedicated Razer RF100 model profile. Next thing we're gonna do is change the configuration of that profile so that it knows to use the orange module instead of this inbuilt one. So we'll go to the model settings and go to the bottom. What we now need to do under the entry that says 
use internal RF, we're going to set that to off. And then we're going to set the external RF to PPM. And the beeping there is just the Orange RX module booting up. Now it's important to set it to PPM and not to DSM2 or DSM-X because there are those options there as well, but they won't work. Leave the standard PPM frame settings, so to 2.5 and to 300, and then press exit and turn off the transmitter. Next thing we need to do is put the little RF100 into bind mode. The way to do that, there is a tiny little button at the front of the quadcopter here. What we need to do is press that whilst we insert the power. So I'll put the battery half in. You may benefit from another pair of hands for doing this. Press and hold the button and then insert the power. And then hold that button down just for a few seconds and then you can release it. Now you'll notice the green lights flashing and the red lights flashing rapidly. For binding I would recommend looking at the red light at the front because the green light can be a little bit intermittent. It doesn't really give you much of an indication as to whether the binding has been successful. We're now going to turn on our transmitter again but whilst doing so we're going to press and hold the bind button on the rear module. Okay so press and hold that button, keep it held down and turn on the power. Hi Ash. And don't release the bind button until the red light stops flashing on the quadcopter. There it is. So we can now release that button and we've bound it successfully. Now unplug the power, plug it back in. There you go, we're now connected. So if we now unlock, and there you go, we've got motors spinning. So it's quite an easy binding process, but you will need that external module or something similar if you have a transmitter that does not natively support DSM-2 or DSM-X. So as usual, I inspected the flight controller configuration for this little quadcopter. It's running clean flight and I immediately noticed that no channel had been assigned to the arm or disarm function. Therefore, I mapped AUX1 and of course set the appropriate mixer settings on my Tirana's transmitter as well. An angle mode setting is assigned to AUX2 from the factory, but for now I left this in place and used the save and reboot to get the new settings saved. Finally time to fly and the first thing that I noticed was that the camera lens wasn't properly adjusted for focus and so I gave it a few turns to get it nice and clear before attempting to fly. When making focal changes always be sure to point the camera towards an object at a decent distance away from you to ensure that you get the setting right. I then decided to test the reaction of the camera to changes of light. I wasn't flying whilst doing this as you can tell but the camera seemed to cope fairly well for a budget sensor. Take off and immediately this quadcopter feels fairly stable and so I go for a basic lap around the kitchen as usual. The one thing that I do notice is that it's a bit pitch happy, so when flying forwards or backwards, upon releasing the controls this little quad seems to want to dive in the opposite direction. I suspect that this is a PID tuning adjustment which can be made via clean flight to improve its handling. This quad is not quite as easy to fly straight out of the box when compared to the Eoshin QX90, but with a little tuning I do believe that it has potential. After a short flight indoors trying to navigate the rooms of my house, it's time to take it outside. It is slightly breezy today and I can immediately feel that as the quad becomes quite unstable at this point. It doesn't handle wind particularly well and so I spend a short time struggling to get back through the back door of the house. To be fair, the wind in my garden can be quite turbulent due to the trees. Now when trying to land, you can see the symptom that I mentioned of the quad constantly trying to oppose my control inputs. I'm trying to fly forwards to land on the top of the kitchen counter, but it's pulling me backwards. The gyro is fully calibrated and I'm flying in horizon mode, and so as I mentioned earlier, I believe that this is simply a clean flight configuration issue. Finally it's time to fly upstairs as per my previous tests. It's quite hard with this quad because of the very wide FOV, the field of view. It's slightly too wide in fact for my liking, but I do manage to get up the stairs and into the first bedroom, only to remember that I'd forgotten to open the window. And finally an evening flight with the RF100. 
It's dark in the house and outdoors, and during this test I noticed that the camera has a night mode. This is not a feature marketed for this quadcopter, but you'll notice that as I fly outdoors out of the house, the camera turns into night mode. At this time of the evening, it isn't dark enough for this mode to be effective, but it is at least nice that it has it. So that's the testing completed. For under $90 or around £60, this is a nice little FPV quadcopter which is ready to fly besides requiring the transmitter and a headset. It is fairly crash resistant due to the nice looking moulded shell, and unlike the QX90, you don't need to keep fitting the camera upright after each tumble. It has a nice VTX and camera, and signal quality was really good, perhaps not as good as the QX90's VTX though. The camera does have a fixed tilt. The angle will be sufficient for most, although it may irritate intermediate to expert FPV racers who want more tilt for flying faster. It comes with a USB charging cable, which is nice for those that do not have a dedicated LiPo charger and it only weighs 50 grams with the battery fitted. Consequently, you get a nice long flight time of five minutes with around 30 minutes time to charge. Now onto the negatives. It doesn't come with spare motors, which is unfortunate as during my test flight, I managed to break one of them after a tumble down the stairs. The battery easily slips out of its holder. So I recommend adding a bit of Velcro to keep it in place and to avoid upsetting the center of gravity. The quad does feel a little bit sloppy, and I don't think the PID values in clean flight are quite right. They need a little bit of adjustment, and I would also add some dead zone to the yaw, as it is extremely sensitive. The antenna mount position is really vulnerable. Mine became loose actually after just a few bumps, and as mentioned during the initial unboxing, it would definitely be worth adding some protection around that antenna to avoid the solder joint being stressed. In addition, the antenna isn't held upright by anything but the solder joint, and for that reason it can flop downwards and get caught in the props. The FOV of the camera is a little too wide for me. This is personal preference, but the extent of the FOV on this camera makes the entire picture quite warped. The gyro seems to have quite a lot of drift. Despite multiple calibrations, it is hard to get this quad to sit on the spot without control inputs in horizon mode. And finally, it has no beeper for battery low conditions, so be very wary when flying not to overstress the LiPo. So that's the review complete. Firstly, a big thanks to Gearbest for sending this to droning on to test and review. Links to this little quadcopter are in the video description, please take a look. I will also add that droning on will only ever test quadcopters that we want to test. We do not and will never test anything and everything that we are offered to review. And in fact, we have declined such products just this week. We believe in quality, not quantity. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the review. We'd also love your comments and for you to subscribe for more videos and reviews like this. We're also thinking of additional tutorial videos which might be of interest to our subscribers. And so please comment to let us know what you would like to see. Thanks again for watching.